What is up, everybody? This is your guy, Cly, and welcome back to Budget Buys. And I just want to start today's video off by saying, I told you so, because I'm going to be talking about the brand new Booga LED 60% gaming keyboard. And I've been predicting the coming of this keyboard in videos since 2021. I bet a lot of my viewers are happy that I can finally shut up about it. But don't worry, there's another keyboard profile that I'm going to be obsessing about instead. Now, before I go any further, I do want to make one small disclaimer. And that's the fact that this video is probably going to be a bit long-winded, especially for such a relatively simple product. And that's because I'm going to be approaching this video as if it's the first time a lot of you have ever encountered a 60% keyboard. And I don't think that's much of a stretch due to the fact that while this profile is relatively common in PC gaming circles, a lot of other people have never even heard of it. I will definitely be taking advantage of the chapter feature here in YouTube, so feel free to skip the portions you already know. Though the almighty YouTube algorithm does prefer it if you sit through everything. Also, I'm gonna go ahead and say this right now, this is a membrane keyboard, not mechanical. And I know, despite the fact that I'm saying this now and I will be saying it multiple times throughout the video, there will inevitably be people asking what kinds of switches this keyboard uses. And those are gonna fall in two categories. The first will be the people that skipped around the video and completely missed every time I said it. And the second group is going to be practical jokers that think it's funny to leave that comment, especially after I took the effort to point this out. And to those of you in the second category, I have one small request. Get creative with it. Don't just ask what kinds of switches these use, name a make and model. Ask if it has cherry browns, gator on yellows, red dragon bullet QTs, or something completely different. The more obscure, the better. And I will make sure to leave a heart next to each one of those comments when I get around to reading them. Now, unlike a lot of the products in my keyboard review playlist, this package is pretty bare bones. All you receive is the keyboard itself, the manual, and a 47 inch slash 120 centimeter micro USB cable. Just like with pretty much every one of the new Booga products released since the end of 2021, you do not get a Booga collector's card. And I think that's kind of weird due to the fact that this is kind of replacing two different products, including the one-handed keyboard that was launched after the initial seven piece set and also came with its own standalone collector's card. You don't get one of these this time. And yes, I did say micro USB a moment ago, which is not something you really see in these 60% gaming keyboards these days. Typically, you're going to be seeing USB type C or in the case of the two previous membrane 60% keyboards I reviewed, you're going to be seeing an integrated cable. And when you take that into account, I guess it's not so bad to have a micro USB detachable cable, though it does mean you're not going to be able to make use of any of your fancy coiled aviator style USB cables or my personal favorite, my chainmail wrapped USB type C cable. Let me know down in the comments if you'd be interested in seeing a tutorial about how I made that. Also, if you think about it, the micro USB connector is probably the reason why Five Below was able to sell these at the $10 price point. Because the two that I reviewed with integrated cables not only came in well over that price point, one being $14 while the other was $15 when I recorded those videos, both of which shot up to 20 before one left the market and the other is still available. That being the Rogue from Kraken Keyboards. I guess the manufacturer just wanted to either clear out their inventory or they're trying to make use of the machinery they have on hand to manufacture these boards and they're selling them at a discount to remain relevant. Now, because this is a 60% keyboard, it is time for everyone's favorite part of the video, the function layer. Now, when you hold down the function key and hit escape, that is going to give you a grave, but if you hold down function, shift, and then hit escape, it's going to give you a tilde. And yes, I did actually test this because some of the keyboards that I've reviewed in the past, even the mechanical ones, have an issue with that. Next up, holding down function and hitting one of the numbers one through zero is going to give you F1 through F10 respectively, whereas the hyphen is F11 and the equals is F12. Function plus Y is print screen, U is scroll lock, I is pause break, 
H is insert, N is delete, J is home, M is end, K is page up, and the comma is page down. Function plus O is going to turn your LEDs off, whereas P is going to activate or deactivate the breathing mode. Over here on the semicolon, that's going to reduce your LED brightness, and on the apostrophe, that will increase your LED brightness. Now, here's something that this little keyboard gets right that a lot of other much more expensive keyboards drop the ball on, in my opinion. When you hold down function and hit W, that's going to change W, A, S, and D into your arrow keys. And they will stay that way until you hold down function and hit W again. A lot of keyboards force you to have function held down in order to use the arrow keys, and then when you release function, they immediately jump back to being letters. Personally, I prefer it when they toggle, but you might feel differently. However, the hill I am willing to die on is the fact that the function key combination with the Windows key that locks the Windows key is very important on gaming keyboards. I've lost track of the amount of times I've been gaming and my cat stretches out his paw and slaps the Windows key, which then kicks me out of whatever game I'm playing for a moment. It's just not fun. Now, let's take a moment to talk about why people like 60% keyboards so much. And we're going to start off with the original Booga keyboard and mouse. And when I say original, I mean the actual original, because as you can see, my letters are lit up. They got rid of that feature in the current version that's on their shelves. And I think most of you would agree with me that that is a bit of a downgrade. Now, this setup is pretty friggin' cramped. I have my camera zoomed very far out for this shot, so much so, in fact, that the entire width of the desk mat that I use as a backdrop in my videos is visible on the screen. You can even see the rounded corners and the black table underneath the desk mat if you look closely enough. And here I've zoomed out just a little bit more so that I can fit not only the 60% keyboard, but the new Booga LED Gaming Mouse 2, which is in the popular honeycomb style, as well as the one-handed keyboard. Not only is this closer to my ideal gaming setup in general, but all three of these items were actually stealth releases. There was barely any announcement for the one-handed keyboard, and I've not seen anything for the new mouse or the 60% keyboard yet. I'm wondering if the lukewarm response to the one-handed keyboard has kind of made their marketing department a little gun-shy on the promotion of these, and if so, it's kind of sad because while I personally love one-handed keyboards, 60s is where it's at for most people. This is one of the most popular keyboard profiles on the market. And you don't have to take my word for it. Without even leaving my channel, you can find my review for the Red Dragon K617 Fizz. This video is only a few days away from hitting 200 thousand views. And as of the recording of this video, my channel only just recently crossed 17,000 subscribers. And as such, it's considered a good day when one of my videos gets over 2,000 views. Which, coincidentally, pretty much every other 60% keyboard review I've done has cleared that mark, even if not by the same margin as the Fizz. Thinking about it, my review of the original Booga keyboard is also at over 200,000 views. Does that mean that this video is going to blow up? I hope so. Now let's get that one-handed keyboard out of the shot, because while I like it, most people aren't going to be using it. Instead, they're going to have a setup closer to this. And as you can see, it takes up way less real estate than the full-size keyboard. And it does so by stripping away pretty much every key that you do not need while gaming. And any that you might need, like the arrow keys, are rebound. This is going to give you a lot more room on your desk for your mouse and make gaming just that much more comfortable. Also, it does kind of share a feature with the one-handed keyboard, and that's the fact that you can easily shift it off to the side and get yourself into a much more comfortable gaming position. I don't know about you, but I'm not really a big fan of sitting like this. It makes me hunch over, and I much prefer to recline when I game. 
And for those of you wondering how this keyboard feels, it's the standard membrane fare. The keys are a bit squishy, but not terrible. I've definitely used worse. And it's also a heck of a lot quieter than most linear mechanical keyboards. Now, the space-saving features of a 60% keyboard are all well and good, but the most commonly mentioned reason a lot of people have been going with 60% keyboards, especially when they're mechanical, has to do with customization. And buying parts for a 60% keyboard is a whole heck of a lot cheaper than buying them for a full-size keyboard. Since you don't need as many. Now, you can't really do much with this, but if you have a mechanical keyboard, you can do all kinds of things, like swap out your switches for ones you'd prefer, like these Red Dragon Bullet QTs, which I'll be featuring in a future video, or maybe get yourself a fancy case like this walnut and metal case on the Timber from Keyboard Lab, another one that I'm gonna be reviewing in a future video, or you can go with what is arguably the most popular option, and that's just swapping out your keycaps you could get something along the lines of a sublimation printed set of PBT keycaps, or you could go with one of the more budget-friendly yet still eye-catching options, which is a set of pudding caps like the ones I have installed on this Red Dragon K599, which I'll be reviewing in a future video. I got a lot of those popping up in this one. And when I say eye-catching, I mean this. These caps have a little bit of a translucent layer down towards the bottom that really lets the LEDs shine through. Though at the same time, this Buga 60% keyboard does have a white base plate and it gives a pretty similar effect. Now, because both of these keyboards do allow you to adjust the brightness, let's compare the two. Right now I have both of them at maximum brightness. Then we go down just one level, not bad. A second level, still very similar, and the final level, which is off. And it's kind of interesting that both of these have the same settings. Now let's see how they compare to each other while breathing. I hope I can synchronize this. All right, we are pretty close, but there is already a bit of a difference between the blinking modes of these two though you're also not going to be using these at the same time. And that was the Booga LED 60% gaming keyboard. And in my opinion, this is pretty much a must buy, especially for those of you who do not already have a 60% keyboard, because a lot of people's first encounter with a mechanical gaming keyboard is going to be 60%, and that's not a profile for everybody. It would probably sting a whole heck of a lot less to spend $10 on this little membrane model than to buy and hate a keyboard that can easily cost you well over $100. Though, of course, not all mechanical keyboards are going to be that pricey, but many of them are, especially the licensed ones. I know recently the FaZe Clan have teamed up with Ducky to release a 60% mechanical gaming keyboard that sold for around $140 and sold out very quickly. And there are other content creators out there who have also released their own 60% keyboards that go for even more than that. So good on Booga for releasing a $10 60%. Also, if you want to know more about mechanical keyboards in general, I have a whole playlist of them in 60%, full size, and even TKL, which is one of the keyboard profiles we've not seen in Five Below before, and I really think they should start looking into getting their own. It's definitely possible to get a membrane TKL in the same price point as a membrane 60, so get on it. Oh, and speaking of Red Dragon, they recently launched their own official Discord server, which I'll be linking down in the description below. And you might want to join that because they regularly have giveaways. So if you want to get your hands on your first mechanical keyboard for free, you might want to check it out. Also, I'm on that server so often that they've actually made me a moderator. So feel free to say hi if you join. And no, they didn't pay me to say any of this. And of course, I have more keyboard videos coming in both the budget-friendly as well as the slightly pricier category. And if you want to see those when they come out, feel free to subscribe. 
Also, for my longtime viewers, don't worry, I'm not transitioning full time into keyboard videos. I still like talking about all kinds of tech. Now, because this video has definitely gone well beyond what I had originally planned, I think it's only right for me to say, until next time, this is your guy, Cly, signing off.